This week we're starting off with the question, what is literature? And the related question, what good is it? Maybe some other questions related to that will come up, such as, what can you do with it? What types of literature are there? Now this may seem to you like a question that nobody would actually ask. It's sort of like saying, what is air? Or what is water? But it actually is fairly controversial. Earlier this year, Bob Dylan, the famous songwriter, was given the Nobel Prize for Literature. A lot of people in the literary community thought that this was crazy because Bob Dylan is a songwriter. He's not a poet, he doesn't write novels, he doesn't write plays, and they didn't want to think of what Bob Dylan does as literature, or as a form of literature. Other people said, well, if you go back to ancient times, most poetry was set to music, so songwriting really should be thought of as a form of literature. Here's another example. When I was an undergraduate, back in the dark ages, I worked at a bookstore that had a section for fiction, and it also had a section for literature. What was the difference between these two sections? Mainly what was in the literature section was what we thought had literary merit, what we thought had more artistic merit than what was in the fiction section. To some extent, that decision was arbitrary. You might think it's helpful to look at a dictionary definition of literature. I would argue that that is not especially helpful. So here is one just to prove that point. This is from the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language. Imaginative or creative writing, especially of recognized artistic value. That gives you a couple of characteristics of what might count as literature, but it doesn't really give you much criteria for deciding what counts and what doesn't. How would you describe literature? I'm going to ask you in this discussion thread to give me your own definition, in your own words, of what you think counts as literature. And you'll also have the opportunity to look at a few items and decide whether that item counts as literature or not, and tell me why or why not. One way that we decide what counts as literature and what doesn't count as literature is going by what's called the canon, C-A-N-O-N. The word canon is a religious term, actually. It goes back to, I believe, the 4th century, when a council of the Catholic Church met at Nicaea to decide which of the various religious texts that were floating around that people had collected were going to be included in the Catholic Church's official Bible. Obviously, not everything made the cut. The things that did make the cut were considered canonical, or part of the canon. The texts that did not make the cut are considered apocryphal. In literature, we have a very similar idea. There are certain works that are considered important, that we study in school, that we study in college, that literary critics tend to write about the most, and those are considered the canonical works, works that are part of the canon. The canon is constantly evolving, and it's not a fixed set of works, necessarily. It's more sort of an abstract idea that we have about which works are the most important. Some people might even argue about which works are the canonical works by certain authors and which are not. Who decides what's in the canon? Generally, it's people like editors, publishers, school teachers, literary critics, professors of literature, people like Kelly Mays decided which works by which author she was going to include in this textbook, and therefore was deciding what she considers to be canonical. Some people might say, well, literature is more about the journey than the destination. General mass market fiction that you might buy in the grocery store, your genre fiction that you might buy in the airport, is mostly not about the sentence by sentence level journey. It's more about hitting different plot points and how that plot is resolved. It's, what, it's the destination. Literature is more concerned with what do we notice along the way. In other words, its value is in the experience of it, not necessarily in what it tells us or teaches us or in whether the good guy wins or not. This brings us to one of our other questions that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. What is literature for? I like this answer. The purpose of literature is to describe what it's like to be a human being. That was said by one of my favorite writers, David Foster Wallace, who we will read later on this semester. And I think that it says a lot about what we can get out of literature and what we can do with it. It allows us to practice empathy. 
Your textbook has a list of suggestions of what literature might be good for. For example, it says it reveals truths about human nature that are not easily described using only facts. It adds beauty and elegance to our lives and our experience. Literature has to be analyzed and interpreted, which provides practice for the analysis and interpretation of other messages and media we encounter on a daily basis. Finally, your book suggests that the literature of a culture is one of the defining elements of that culture. By analyzing literature, therefore, we come to understand more about ourselves. And so I think this is a very important point also. Next week you're going to be reading Cathedral by Raymond Carver, and you're also going to read some sample essays about that story. That will help you when you start to write your own essay later on in the semester. So I'll see you later.